What is up guys and welcome back to another DC movie reaction today. Dakota and I are here with Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. This is the last Christopher Reeve Superman movie. There is technically one more Superman movie down the line that is connected to this movie, but it's not Christopher Reeve. Dakota, now that we've seen, we've seen so many now, what are, what are your kind of expectations for this one with it being like, the wrap-up of Christopher Reeve Superman. In terms of like where the plot's going, I have no idea because again, I don't know my Superman villains or whatever. But it pretty much hit all the people that I could think of. I don't know it's been all over the place. I think like a bunch of wild endings or like the CGI get better and kind of worse or whatever. It's all like you know. So I don't know. I like legitimately don't have any expectations or like I no foresight going into it. So it's gonna be completely just let's see what happens. Fair enough. Fair enough, without further ado, we're gonna jump right into this one. Do us a favor if you haven't already, and subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell, so you get notified every time we're dropping a new DC live action movie. We are watching every single live action DC movie in the build up to James Gunn's new DCU. And also, if you wanna have a more exclusive, premium experience watching these movies with us, head over to the Patreon page, linked in the description below. Over there, you can watch the entire movies with us from the beginning to the end um no cuts and stuff so go check that out it's definitely worth the experience now we're gonna get in to superman 4 the quest for peace let's go nice oh fun fact john crier he plays one of the two guys in two and a half men and then years after that, he actually played Lex Luthor on uh, Supergirl. Oh, all right. Which is kind of crazy. And in this, he plays Lex Luthor's cousin or something. Oh, it really? Oh, my. Great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Margot Kidder's back as Lois Lane. Okay. I mean, she was in Superman 3, but briefly. Yeah, we'll have to see if they make an excuse for, uh, who was it? The other girl? Lana. Lana. Yeah, not being in here. <laughs> I know. The... You know, what, like you said at the beginning in the intro, you know, these movies have had some crazy endings. Yeah. But Superman 3, despite being our least favorite of the three so far, had the most normal ending. Yes. If anything, it had the best ending. Right, where yeah. I was like, ooh, I kind of want to see that movie. <laughs> but unfortunately, Lana does not come back. At least from my memory. I could be wrong. So I don't know if you saw that, but it said story by Christopher Reeve and someone else. Hmm. Christopher Reeve was like heavily involved in the story of this one. Oh, all right. That could have been why he wasn't in Supergirl, because maybe he was working on this. Yeah, maybe. What? Oh, no. I mean, Gosh, I, you know, a lot of people are always talking about how they'd want to go to space and stuff. I, I'm good. Yeah. Like, this just looks stress. Yeah, that's what I thought was gonna happen. Nice, because I mean, Superman is like a, a kind of like an international like superhero, right? Like he saves people around the world. Yeah, worldwide. Yeah, so yeah. saving uh, like a Russian space shuttle in state uh, in space is actually kind of that works. This is like I like this. He knows Russian though. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so much we don't know about Superman. Maybe he his mind. You know, maybe he can take in a lot more information quicker. Like, maybe he can pick up a language, boom, you yeah. know, quickly. Oh, shoot, we're going back to Smallville, though. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe Lana is in this one. I'm already invested, though. That was, I like that as an opening. Oh, is this the Kent? This must be the Kent farm. Did Martha die? Uh. <sighs> if, if she did, it happened off screen, right? Because I don't remember her dying. But I also don't remember him visiting her last movie. Oh yeah, especially yeah when he's in Smallville. Yeah, he would have visited his mom. Oh, hmm. I'm in the floorboards again. Listen carefully, my son. By now, Kalel, you are entering the atmosphere of the planet known as Earth. <laughs> it's funny again. It's her mother giving this talk, even though the whole point like during the first movie was that it was his father doing it right <laughs> <laughs> the power in the module can be used but once use it wisely my son 
I wonder what it does. And why is this the first time he's taken it out? Yeah, I was thinking, like, is this, like, a flashback to, like, the first movie of, like, him? Because at this point, he would leave to go to the Fortress of Solitude, right? But Right. I'm guessing not, though, right? Because if the farm is for sale and oh yeah, all it was, that, yeah. maybe he's just, like, getting stuff before someone else buys it. Mr. Hornsby, that's my final decision, though, about the place. I'm going to hold out for a real farmer. You are. Yeah. And you're just as obstinate as your father was, too. Well, I'm sorry about that, sir, but that's just the way it is. Well, you be careful when you get back to Metropolis, Clark. It's a long, long way from where you were born. Yes, sir. i never forget that, sir. Huh. Oh, that's... All right, I, I get it. That's funny. I do respect his decision, though. Like, he doesn't want his, his childhood home to just, you know, be just taken out for, like, some shopping mall or something. He's back! Oh, it's about time. Now how the hell do I get to Cedar City? <laughs> you on the wrong side of the state, boy! No chance. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Come on, get him. Really? Come on. Really? <laughs> He's got his name on his car, Lenny. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, oh, whoa. Oh. Oh, what? Unnecessary explosion. Oh, okay. Oh, they didn't show it. Oh, oh I do okay or what, Uncle Lex? He ain't good enough. What? All right, I guess. Sure, I guess they can't kill him because kids, maybe, but <laughs> it does feel appropriate that for the last, you know, the last Christopher Reeve Superman movie, they brought Lex back yeah. as the villain. The Daily Planet hasn't made any money in three years. And the Dang. name of the game is making money. I think I speak for all of us when I say that we'll do our best to cooperate, but a reporter's first allegiance has to be to the truth. The people of this city depend on us, and we can't let them down. I don't know how to tell you this. I just don't think he'd be attracted to somebody like you. <laughs> don't be silly. Dang. All men like me. I'm very, very rich. <laughs> Amazing. I love that she's self-aware. She's like, yeah, I'm rich, and that's... Yeah. Hey, it's a plus. Jeremy, what do you think we can do about the crisis? I tell you, I'd write a letter to that would do some good. Who, Santa Claus? No, Superman. Superman, the subject of our newest exhibit, has graciously donated a strand of his hair to the museum. So we can all have the fun of seeing how strong he oh, nice. is. With my genius and enough hey, nuclear go power tigers. to mutate the Oh, a thousand, a thousand pounds. Okay. I can create a being who's more powerful than him. Yeah, so in the comics, usually this is like bizarro, but it's not in this. Hmm. Wait, what? Would that have been able to cut it, though? Oh, probably not. <laughs> yeah, You know would, what I mean? He, like, would, he would have tried it. Yeah, the pli uh, pliers would have broke. <laughs> that's what I would think. I, I don't know. Dear Superman, forgive me for writing to you, but my teacher is speaking about the president's yeah. speech on the arms race. I don't care if everybody thinks I'm a space cadet. Once you've destroyed all the nuclear missiles in the world, they'll see I was right. Superman can make sure we don't blow ourselves up quick and easy. Thanks a lot. I know you'll come through. Uh, Your friend Jeremy. Poor kid. We're going to make this kid a celebrity. Everybody in the world is going to be wondering what Superman's reply is. I mean, kind of. That would, that would work, I'd say. I, I'd say for the yeah. news, news today, it's like, yeah, a kid making a statement to like try to meet up with superman i mean i feel like I'd, if superman follows through with it then that would make the news which i guess them kind of putting him on camera and stuff would kind of try and push superman towards actually showing up yeah but this is also they they got news a source of news so they're gonna make money oh superman says drop dead to kid oh no they're saying that superman ignored the kid there's nothing we can do about it. It's Superman's decision now. I'm sure he'll do the right thing. Yeah, I mean, we'll what, see. I mean, what would be the right thing in this instance? Because, I mean, I don't know. It's a tricky situation. You can't just enact your will against the world. You have to get them to agree to it. Clark, stop! Oh! Clark! 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 What? What? Don't kiss. <laughs> Don't like. Superman. Why? What was? Why did he do this? 
Yeah. That was so sudden. After the Superman 2 thing where they the kiss, you know, erased her memory, it's like, okay, we did that for a reason, right? Is, it, is this like a dream or something? It has to be, I would think. You don't even know my name. kal Okay, it is a, a dream, maybe. You remember, don't you? I remember everything. It has to be a dream, right? I feel like they've drawn it out so long now, though. I feel like it can't be. Unless he just erased her memory again. Huh. Oh, he did. He did. So he did the... So he can just take her memory away after... That's... This seems wrong. This just seems wrong. Lois? Yep, uh, he Lois, did. It's time to go. We'll be late. Huh? What am I doing out here freezing my body? Yeah, th this seems wrong. Oh. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, something very wrong for Superman to do. He can just take her memory away whenever he feels like it. That's like manipulation. That's like not... <laughs> this is wrong. Yeah, what the heck? But also, like, kind of in a weird way, doing that again, I think, kind of saves the second ending a little bit. <laughs> Because it, it's consistent. Well, because they're just giving him that ability now. Yeah, but so it, it it's is also consistent. Like, but, it, but see, for me, though, the ending of the second one, even though I think it's kind of stupid, I think it's very stupid, but the ending, it was for, you know, he did it for a, a very good reason. Yes. Where here, it just felt like he was just doing it to do it. Yeah, just to, like, have a fun little Superman date night before... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. The implications of what just happened are, are yikes. Ladies and gentlemen, for many years now, I've lived among you as a, a visitor. As of today, I'm not a visitor anymore because the earth is my home too. And so I've come to a decision. I'm going to do what our governments have been unwilling or unable to do. Effective immediately, I'm going to rid our planet of all nuclear weapons. <laughs> I mean, oh, uh, this is a sticky situation we find ourselves in right now because I understand why it seems like a great thing, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> what, dude? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's not... Hold on, all those were fired missiles? Or were, yeah, like, some of know. them, like, taken? Or, I don't... I would assume they weren't all fired, because he only took two that were launched. Let me... Do genetic material. I do kind of miss, uh, Otis, right? That was his name? Yeah, I do. I was just thinking about him. I was kind of like... Because the music was the music they used for Otis. Oh, was and it? And he's just not... Yeah. And he's just not here. Oh. It's kind of like, dang, where is he? Parents. What the heck? <laughs> Why? That, that was weird, but okay. He's excited to be a parent, I guess, with his uncle. Ten. Nine. <laughs> now. <laughs> Watch it. Impatient much? Yeah, I feel like he got a... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Maybe you should have waited for the countdown, Lex. Yeah, Superman's gonna take care of it. How poetic, right? Superman's creating his own doom. That's gotta be what's going through Lex's mind right now. Oh, yep, there it is. It's He's, he's uh, coming to life here. Uh, oh, there he is. Nuclear man. <laughs> is that his name? Oh, no. Yeah, that's his name. He's made up for the movie. Oh. His design is very much like he would be on a stage somewhere, part of a rock band. Over here, Clarky. Oh, don't no. call him Clarky. <laughs> That's an instant red flag. Don't, <laughs> don't even, don't even converse with this guy. Oh, here, try this one. Clark, oh. are you okay? Yeah. Sorry. No pain, no gain. What a jerk. No pain, no gain. <laughs> that was good. I, I like that. No pain, no gain. Welcome home, nuclear man. Your father's happy to see you. Okay. Oh, nice. Who was the other guy that did that? The witch in the Supergirl? Oh, right. <laughs> in Supergirl, yeah. You are nothing. I am the father now. What? Fair enough. You're just an experiment, freak out. Oh. <laughs> uh. What's that? 
Is he gonna die? <laughs> this dude. Oh, I'm breakdancing. Hey, bro, what is this character? Destroy Superman now. No, 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 that's your job. We'll discuss when the proper time is. Oh. Oh, okay. He gets his energy from the sun. Without it, he's like you at night. Useless. Hey, oh, yo. I was thinking to sleep. How would but... you know that? <laughs> How would you know that, Lex? That's a pretty big weakness, though. Yeah. Just get him out of the sun and he's done? All right, that's not much of a threat. Yeah, we'll have to see how long it takes Superman to beat him. Cause, or if Lex is, again, Lex is smart. If he comes up with a good idea of like how to keep like the sun energy or whatever, then that'd be fine. Hi, Lacey. Hi, Clark. Uh, say, could you pick a 20? Driver didn't have any change. Yeah, sure. Let rich. me get my purse. Bye, yeah, you're rich, right? Hi, Clark. Wait a second, I just realized, how is he going to do this? Because him and Superman are both meant to be here at the same time. Yeah, Clark, he's probably helping the cab driver change a flat tire or some other good deed. <laughs> See, I don't know how, how this is going to work, though. Something smells wonderful. <laughs> Something smells wonderful. I gotta go. Ooh. Good is something wrong? That's interesting. I Okay, so that is what happened. Yeah, so he, he, he did that to the... To the food so that he could get out of there real quick to come back as clark right but he so he x-ray visioned but also used his heat vision through or did he just know or what no yeah no i think i think you're right i think he used the heat vision as well huh. how can one man be so square and so delicious wow all right let's go chit he's not holding back at all so you. Uh, Lacey? Uh, no. Uh -oh. oh, Clark. That was, I mean, that works uh, out. Yeah, it was very convenient. Because then he would have to think of some other thing. Although, what's that guy's deal? He didn't even stop? Like, surely he felt the extra weight and was like, Oh, hold on, let me stop for a second. Where's Clark? Well, he started to get in the elevator and then this guy... Oh, never mind, it's a long story. Well, it always is with Clark. Oh, great, that's him. Clark? Hi. What? Dude. Wait, how did he ring the doorbell? <laughs> did he use his x-ray vision again? I don't know if that would work. Like, could he use his laser eyes to, like, ring the doorbell? I just don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna blow 20 stories off that building. Give or take a floor or two. That's pretty neat, though. Of course, Lex sees him. Because he did that before, right? The frequency yeah, he that no one he can see or in hear. In the first movie. Yeah, so that's In the first good. movie, he called him, yeah. What are you doing back in Metropolis? Because I want to be the first. To introduce you to the new kid on the block. Destroy Superman. First, I have fun. <laughs> Alright. Well, hopefully all the effects haven't looked good in this movie because they were saving it for this fight. That's my hope. Yeah, it, what a good start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, not an amazing start. <laughs> oh, no. the JPEGs. <laughs> that was crazy. Dude, okay, nah. <laughs> oh, God. Got him! The Great Wall of China. China? Alright, we're in China. Oh, God! No, yeah, that's not good. What? Oh, building the, of course. Because he can just do that. I mean, now his- Have we seen him do that before? I mean, his vision's now, like, interacting with doorbells and cooking chicken. Or ducks. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Superman can do anything in this movie. Okay. Oh. All right. I thought the whole... Well, again, he could be going rogue here because he seemed like he was not to. But I thought the whole point was let's still keep all the countries intact but have the nuclear threat return. So why is he, like, destroying all these places? I, I don't know. I mean, he's causing a volcano eruption right now, but for what purpose? Yeah. <laughs> Superman speaking in other, in other languages is like very satisfying. Oh, oh maybe okay. it's not as dumb as he seems. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my claws. 
What? Oh, is that like a poison effect? Like, uh, like, uh, what, Copperhead? Oh. The scorpion. It's something. Well, didn't Lex say earlier if he, like, scratched him or something, it would hurt, it would kill him or something? Well, he is strong enough to, like, yeah, he'll do damage to him, I guess. So that's it. As he's bleeding out from yeah. the neck. Where'd this come from? Oh, that somebody brought it in. We bought it cheap. Okay. This time you have both gone too far. You can print your stupid right Superman dead? Books. And you certainly have no right to this. I don't know if you can... I don't think you can take that, Lois. They paid for it, they said. Like, Yeah. Lois, I'm sorry. I promise you I had nothing to do with that. Have you heard from Clark? I mean, how long was Clark, was Superman, like, gone for? It was when they left the apartment. I guess it's the next day, I mean, it maybe? it had to be a little, a uh, decent amount of time since they already got the cape and brought it back here and everything. Yeah. They just didn't really show it. They just kind of cut. Oh. Ooh. Oh, so he's, like, sick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, of course. They're trying to break in, though? It's just kinda... a minute. Uh, oh, look. You haven't been to work? You haven't called the office? You haven't even called me back. How could you not call me back? Why do you care? Whatever it is. But I, guess you got your I, I mean, but why she hasn't he? He didn't even care earlier in the movie. Yeah, but also, why hasn't he called it? If he was sick, he could just be like, hey, I'm sick for like, I don't know how long. I'm going to be out for a few days. True. I don't. I don't know. Maybe this is a form of manipulation. He wanted, <laughs> he, he, he wanted Lois to show up here. I just feel like he would. Again, he's smart. It's like he just needs to, he would know to be like, all right, I'm to call in and be like, all right, I need to take a minute to like get better. Um, oh my gosh, look at him. Oh. I don't know if it's the low lighting or if he just looks that way. That no, he's like balding. Like balding and silver hair. Is yours. Mm hmm. Got After like a, gone, a rash thing looking thing on his face. To your new home. Well, yeah, he's been in the in his apartment for a while has he gone out to the sun yet <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean it looks like he's on like a terrace right now oh yeah he's out I'm on the, I'm, i guess i'm guessing that crystal thing though i mean he picked it up earlier in the movie he just had a little scene there with it it's got to be the thing that gets him his strength back or something yeah but then but then how are you gonna defeat nuclear man you can't just have another you know one-on-one -on -one fight because you lost the first time so he's got to come up with a solution Unless he's like very determined the second time, because he wouldn't have been the first or first time or something dumb. I guess, or figure out. Oh, fight him at night. What? Right, let's let's see. I guess. I know. There's definitely a missing half hour of this movie. Like I know he was sitting up on the terrace, but now he's just okay. We didn't see it happen. So what? We're saying this guy basically has every power. Yeah. What? <laughs> and Superman can bring him down. I mean, sure. Oh, yeah, wait. The other... Was it Superman 3 where he used his, like... Somehow he brought a gun to him? Didn't he have, like, telekinesis oh, in the other movie? Why yeah. do I feel like... Zod did. Zod. Superman oh, 2. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that could one be. One of them could just bring a gun to his hand. I remember. Because I was like, that's not a normal power. Here, follow me up the elevator. You know what? Okay, I'm glad they're not, like, flying around again. Because that stuff is, like, bad. That looks good, Agreed. though. Because that's... Well... Yeah, it's just well. wire work. I would think. Like, all this stuff has been practiced. Even when the guys were floating up in the air, like, those five guys, they were, like, clearly on, like, a wire. It wasn't green screen, which right. is good. Oh, yeah, you can tell the difference. Oh! That's smart. I did not think about that. And now just fly him to the... Well, I don't know if you can fly him into the sun, because he was born in the sun. So I don't know if that would actually kill him. I mean, I guess you could just throw him away in space, like just send him far away. Or bury him on the moon. Nah, this isn't good enough. I would take him to an inhabitable planet, or like a, a an empty planet where there's nobody and nothing on it, and just leave him there. Oh? Oh, but if they have a moon fight, maybe that. That's what it's looking like is gonna happen. This is the only part of the movie I genuinely remember is the moon, th this scene here. Hmm. 
Oh, that's kind of cool. Just a knee to the face. <laughs> and throwing him there. He was clearly on wires, which looks so much better than when they tried to do the green screen stuff. Yeah. Which I still don't under understand because they did green screen stuff in the first movie and in Supergirl and it looked good. There you go. Take a photo. <laughs> You're mine now. Why would he take her? Like, earlier in the movie, I know he, he saw her on a newspaper or something, I think. But I'm still kind of like, why? Why is he taking her, though? P pushing oh, okay. the moon? I don't think he could do that. Oh. Oh, no. I I mean, I get your plan here, but... I still don't think he could do that, though, if you mess up yeah, the moon. Yeah, this could cause problems. <laughs> yeah, the moon's orbit or whatever. Also, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, She's in space right now. Yeah, that's not... They established at the beginning of the movie that there's... You had to have, like, dudes in spacesuits. This isn't, like, some weird fictional world where people can survive out of space. <laughs> oh, my. Oh. He comes back. Where are we taking him, though? What? Oh, the nuclear plant, because, you know, he's nuclear man, I guess. Sure. The only thing to defeat the nuclear man is atomic matter. Would this not just make him more powerful? I know that powers the city. <laughs> Guess we need a tape recorder, huh? Be right back. <laughs> Same old Mr. King. He'll never change. I hope not. <laughs> there you go. See, now they're using the wire work, which looks good. I don't know why earlier they were, I mean, the whole movie, they were just doing a lot of green screen stuff, and it's like the wire work just looks so much better. Yeah. Just one thing. How did you beat him? High school physics, Luther. While I was recuperating, I had time to figure out that if your foul creature was born from the sun, that had to be a source of energy. Is the world gonna be vaporized? No, Luther. It's as it always was, on the brink, with good fighting evil. See you in 20. We also missed that scene where he figured out his weakness, but okay. I guess that one piece of dialogue there is meant to be the explanation for how he figured it out. Oh, yep. We get this shot every movie. Yep. And you can tell it's not from this movie because it actually looks good. <laughs> ah, so that was Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. The last Christopher Reeve Superman movie. All right, here we go. You ready? Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, People talking <laughs> on Reddit, all this stuff. Of course, a lot of stuff going on. There was originally a 135-minute movie. So they cut out, you know... 30 minutes or whatever from the movie uh none of the scenes has been released uh and those that people have seen like the behind the scenes stuff and when they try to piece it together and like fan edits of the movie they can't get it to work so even the scenes that were cut kind of don't work so it's kind of interesting those scenes could be gone forever so legitimately if i think there is no way to like watch the director's cut like a, an extended version where it's a better movie so this is the only movie we've got for Superman Dang. 4, which is kind of sucks. And apparently, uh, this is again going off of a Reddit post. Uh, fourthly, Reeve hated Superman 4. He told uh, John Cryer, I think, who, what, uh, was that the other guy that was writing? He I was, was Lenny. He was um, Lenny Luther. Oh, Luther's, okay. Luther's okay. um, cousin or um, nephew. Told John Cryer during shooting that the film was going to be horrible. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, he, okay. And he was the one that, yeah, we saw Reeve was like writing it or whatever. Isn't that what it was? It said, it said story, something like story created by Christopher Reeve and someone else. Yeah. Wow. And it says that originally it was, you know, shot in like, and shown in like screenings of theaters and whatnot. Uh, after the final disastrous test screening in Los Angeles, again, probably because none of the clips fit or whatever, 45 minutes of footage was cut in an attempt to streamline the plot and focus more on the big set peace battles. Which is why there's no like big story pieces and they're just like, all right, let's show the big dramatic fights or whatever. All of those combined into making Superman shorter and this is the movie we got. You know, I wish that other cut did exist though. 45 minutes is a lot of time to cut, you know, and I feel like it definitely was missing it. I think the, the whole bit of Superman getting healthy again after getting cut, I think we missed all of that. I think there was... The whole plot line of him figuring out um, Nuclear Man's weakness. We missed the whole bit where Lex gets, you know, everything's like working out for Lex. 
Like we missed so, I feel like there's so much missing from this movie. Yeah, that's disappointing. Yeah. And of course a lot, cause okay, for like the first half of the movie, I was completely on board. I was like, I don't get why people are saying this is bad. Again, the CGI of course doesn't look too good, but I was just like, eh, kind of gave that a pass for like it being relatively old or whatever. But even like looking at the story and stuff, it was like, no, this stuff's pretty good. Just how the news is portrayed, I guess is kind of interesting. Cause it's like a kid says something and then like the news is like, oh, well, Superman ignored him. And then that becomes the front cover. And then Superman has to do something at that point or else his like reputation's kind of ruined. That kind of works. I mean, if people just read the headline and people just get, run off with it and it's just like, oh, Superman, tell a kid to screw off. Then it's like, yeah that kind of works for a plot point and then that led to you know superman then making a statement and then fixing all the nuclear warfare stuff i was like the nuclear warfare stuff that seems a little too i don't think that's too especially when his solution was let's put them all in a net and let's throw them at the sun that's just like because i feel like that's still a modern issue now a little bit maybe that it's kind of just like a a cartoonish way to like solve it it's kind of like that's a little but that did eventually lead into Okay, well, Superman's throwing the nuclear stuff at the sun, which then that gives Lex the idea to then put Superman's genetics with a nuclear bomb, and then when it's thrown to the sun, then that creates a nuclear man. So it's like, okay, well, that... In the terms of it being the story, Superman doing that stuff, and then that also leads to him accidentally creating the villain for the story. It's like, that that works. But then, yeah, after that, it was just kind of just like all the main meat of the story is just like gone as much as like okay it's cool to see the cool fights or the cgi and stuff it's a movie where i feel like the story is the main focus and if you cut out the story for the fights that takes away what is the point of having a movie it's one of those things where it's like the the fighting with nuclear man i didn't necessarily feel like it was too much you know i didn't feel like the fighting was too much like Because I think back to Superman 2 when he fights Zod and the other two. There was a lot of fighting in that movie. But I do think Superman 2, even the version we watched, which wasn't even the best version of it. Mm -hmm. I even think that version that we watched was better than than this movie. Like It just felt like the, the production quality of this movie was the worst of all of them so far. But then at some points, it was okay. And I think there's certain things in this movie that are still good. I I think the Superman stuff, when he's addressing the world at the end, um, even when he's at the UN, I think, you know, some of that stuff is really cool. But then you also have weird scenes between Lois and Superman that are even weirder than they were in, like, Superman 2 and Superman 1. You have that whole sequence where he flies her around and then kisses her to erase her memory again, which is so problematic. And I also feel like it's weird because that doesn't come up again. Like, at least, like, you would imagine, like, if that's a plot point in the movie is, like, he is still seeing, like, Lois as Superman and she knows and then, like, he erases it. Then by the end, it would be like, oh, okay, well, by the end, she knows and she's accepting of it. And he's, like, not going to erase her mind anymore. But again, but they don't follow up on that plot point. They just show it earlier in the movie then they're just like all right that's no more of that exactly because one of the issues i had with superman 3 was they had a bunch of ideas in one movie that i just felt like needed their own time to shine rather than shoving all of them into one singular movie where in this one there were multiple storylines going on that i kept forgetting about that would pop up later i don't think that it could have had its own movie because i just don't think it's that strong of a storyline but I feel like the writing and then missing stuff just made you f- not care about certain storylines. Like the whole yeah. Daily Planet being taken over by uh, Warfield or whatever his name was. Right. Like the ending where um, Perry White comes back in and, and, and takes it back. Like I felt like there wasn't enough there for me to care as much. Like I, I was kind of like, all right, cool, I guess. We got to wrap up the movie, I you know. Yeah. But – there was no wait there because that was so earlier in the movie and then he comes back at the end it's like ah i got it back and it's like uh oh yeah uh, uh, cool good for you dude yeah that's also that's also weird especially because how they phrase it was perry white when he ran it the daily planet wasn't doing too well money wise and then like when they came in uh, allegedly it got fixed and then now it's like oh well perry white's back but it's like isn't that gonna be bad for the company is yeah like why would they why would the bank loan him give him the loan if according to the warfields 
they haven't made money in three years or something like they haven't made a profit yeah and then if warfield three years? yeah and then if warfield fixes it in the however long he's been running the thing for you know the movie then why yeah that doesn't make sense why would they get <laughs> if he's making profit for the daily planet and perry white wasn't even making any you know profit well that makes no sense there why would yeah I... if it that doesn't make sense if there was a thing of being like oh yeah he's new and he's trying to do something different and that is failing worse and that would be like a different plot point of being like okay well let's but again it's you don't get that so yeah exactly um i will i will say some positives um i really did enjoy seeing lex luther back that he does gene hackman who plays him he just brings such energy to the films he's in yes um that i i did miss him in superman 3 like Especially because they had a guy in that movie, Ross, who is basically just the replacement for Lex. Yeah. And it's like, oh, so you're just another rich guy, but you're less entertaining. Right. Okay. Like, yeah, it was nice having him back in this movie. Now, I will say, and I I don't necessarily dislike, I didn't necessarily dislike Lenny, Lenny Mm -hmm. Luthor, but he did just feel like the replacement for Otis. Yeah. And it was like... Ah, uh, we could have had Otis. Mm-hmm. Like, all right. But I will say, John Cryer's Lenny character, like, his, it, what was that? <laughs> I don't know what the idea was for that character. He's so weird, so off the wall. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Such a weird character. Lois was fine. I, I got to admit, I kind of missed seeing Lana. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, that could have been Lana instead of the Warfield's daughter girl. We could have taken her out and put Lana in that position. I wonder if that was something. Maybe that could have been like an earlier draft of the script where they were like, eh, no, let's do something different. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering because Lana could have been in that position of like, she's in love with Clark, uh, but then Lois is in love with Superman and they could have played with that. I would have preferred that. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, that would have, that definitely would have worked. I don't know. Well, again, because it's they had all their issues going on with writing or whatever. So, Nuclear Man was just made up for the movie. Also, I mentioned that during the reaction. Which I mean, um, good for any movie that like makes their own villain for uh, their story. I mean, even though he was kind of more of just like a brute, like oh, I'm the bad guy. Still, it's cool. Like his origin story of like getting Superman's DNA and mixing it with like nuclear and the sun or whatever. It's like yeah, that's kind of cool. Kind of neat that Which they... a, nit- a nitpick from me, Superman's hair can hold up a thousand pounds, but it can't withstand being cut. All right. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. The, the, the thing I find funny or kind of interesting, you guys can correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong about this, but Superman 4 came out in 1987. And, you know, so far we had in Superman 1, we had Lex Luthor as the villain. Cool. Superman 2, Luther was back, but the main villain was Zod. Cool. Third movie, though, they made up a villain, Ross, who's a made-up character for the movie. Same with Gus. It's like, okay, those characters were made up for the movie, clearly because they wanted Richard Pryor in the movie. Clearly. Yeah. That was <laughs> that was why. And then Superman 4, they bring Lex back. Cool. But then they give us Nuclear Man, who's also made up. It's like, okay... So Superman 3 and 4, you guys just didn't want to bring in any more, like, Superman villains from the comics? Like... That is also true, yeah. Why? Why? Especially because Nuclear Man, it's basically Bizarro. There's a character in the comics named Bizarro. Oh, yeah. The reason I say, correct me in the comments, is did Bizarro exist yet? I mean, it doesn't bother me too much. I I think Nuclear Man did the job, a physical force for Superman to fight, which I think was something that was missing from Superman 3. But then again, I say that Superman 1 didn't have a physical threat and it it still worked for me. Right, yeah. So it's just writing, I guess. Despite feeling like it's missing stuff, it never never to me did it feel like, oh, we're we're really trying to get through this. Like it never felt slow is what I'm trying to say. It, it's it, it kept a good pace despite missing story beats. But yeah, I don't know. Overall for me though, if to give it a, a rating, I'm gonna give this like a uh, I think I'm gonna give it a three out of ten. It's definitely not an average movie. It's definitely below average. Looking at it, and again, I was invested for the first half, and I was like, okay, this is like actually going somewhere. I think it would have been good like if the movie was coherent. But like, I think most sequels, it's like, yeah, it's good to know the stuff beforehand. But like, if I were to show 
uh, just outright like Superman 2. It should be able to like kind of hold up on its own. You wouldn't have to watch the previous. I mean, it would help, but you wouldn't have to see the previous one to like be able to watch Superman 2. So if I were to just show this movie Superman 4 just to anyone, there's like just how it cuts, just how it is edited. And like the fact that there is like a whole arc that's kind of like missing at the end and it just kind of gets to the final fight scene. I just feel like if you show that to anyone, I feel like a lot of people's natural reaction would just be like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> so it's <laughs> just, real. I put it down to like a two. I think it's just so bad and it can't be redeemed, which is a shame because it's like, it is. you can't go back and like try to fix it. And it's like kind of broken and like a mess. All these movies so far, at least half of them that we've seen so far, I think have the issue of like, oh, there's, they cut some scenes, but like, yeah, even Supergirl, it's like, there was some scenes cut and there was like some things where it's like there's an entire character missing at the end right like that empty cage that was hanging up but even then supergirl i felt like was more it still worked as a story there was i felt like there was nothing there there you've had an inkling that something was missing but like it wasn't well, the urgency to save our people <laughs> <laughs> right yeah i mean yeah that's <laughs> going true. to school for whatever reason yeah yeah like there's definitely a lot of issues with with that movie and this movie for sure. Yeah, that is true, I guess. But I just feel, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like for this one, it was much worse because it just felt like, even in like the climax of it, they just got, that's when you don't cut the stuff. Supergirl, it was like they cut an entire beginning section because they just started right on uh, Kryptonians that are still alive after their world was destroyed. But Superman yeah. 4, it was like, during the climax let's get rid of the stuff and just get to the action it's like so yeah it's very low i i'd say a two is my rating for it that is totally fair i mean this is considered to be one of the worst dc movies like of all time so yeah this is crazy this is the last christopher reeve superman movie it sucks that this is how he goes out you know hmm. next up on our list is the return of Swamp Thing, which I'm sure you are probably very excited to see. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's it for us in this one, guys. Um, make sure to join us in the comments below. Comment what you guys think about Superman 4, the quest for peace. Do us a favor if you haven't already, subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell. So you get notified every time we're dropping a new DC movie reaction. As I've mentioned before, we are watching every single live action DC movie in the lead up to James Gunn's new DC universe. So join us on this journey. It's not too late. We're literally still at the beginning. So it's not too late to jump on this journey along with us. And also feel free to go check out the Patreon page linked in the description below. Over there, you can watch the entire movie with us from the beginning to the end where you sync up your own copy with us. Um, it's definitely the better way to watch these. So go check that out. And if you become a patron, you get shouted out at the end of every single video. So shouting out the patrons, we have Everton V, The Superman Batman, Tina, 1204, and Christina Renee. Thank you guys for being patrons, and thank you guys for watching. We will see you in the next one with the return of Swamp Thing. That's a wrap. Woo! I am on break. I'm gonna live like a king by doing my thing. Hey, I am on break. I'm gonna live life free. I'm gonna do it like me, yeah. Yeah, I am on break. No, this is not fake. I'm just chilling on break.